Hello and welcome to this week's edition of The Wrap Podcast with me, Lee G. Joining me as always is Jamie and James. Good evening, gentlemen. How are we both? Good evening. Very well, thank you. Good, good, good. So Harley isn't with us this evening. Harley is over on the Cardiff uh, podcast, Cardiff Central podcast. Um, So they've got a guest on there that Harley really, really wanted to talk to. Like really, really wanted to talk to. So he's ditched us and gone over to the Cardiff Central podcast. Bastard, if you ask me. (laughs) What do you reckon it was? Tom James. (laughs) Must be Sam Warburton or someone like that. Somebody, somebody really important. Yeah, it's the uh... skill. (laughs) (laughs) The skill. (laughs) It's the um, so they're interviewing the someone from the Cardiff Supporters Trust. So, um, so that'd be quite good for them. And we've got a very good guest next week already lined up, which is lovely. But I'll tell you about that at the end. So before we crack on and do anything else, let's get some admin out of the way. Gentlemen, your drink of the week this week. James, what have you got, my friend? Uh, no alcohol tonight for me, mainly because I forgot to and get some. Um, <laughs> but fear, fear not, Morrison's will be raided tomorrow because I found I found out they sell Tiny Rebel in, oh. in the depths of Bognor. Um so Excellent. I will be picking up some tiny rebel from uh, cup of tea. Cup of tea. <laughs> is it just a cup of tea, or is it a fa- is it at least like a fancy cup of tea? Is it like an Earl Grey or something? Is it like a... no? It's uh, Tetley tea uh, with Cravendale milk. Good choice because that's good choice. Mm. It's in a it's in a fancy Thanos mug. Okay, uh, so, yeah. so, so the mug makes up for it. Okay, we'll let you get away with that one. James, what, what have you got this week, mate? I don't know if you're going to let me get away with this because <laughs> I'm going sober tonight as well. Oh, only boys, because, <laughs> not only because I was out on Saturday night for the World Cup. We, we went out for a meal and some drinks. Me and Mister, we watched the World Cup final, and we got home later than expected. Um, and I had an absolute skinful, and because of my age now, it's taking me longer. To sort of, you know, get over my hangover. So I'm on a Coke Zero tonight. <laughs> you so, pair of yeah. fannies. <laughs> oh. I can't drink tonight. I just don't fancy it. I do not fancy a drink tonight. I've had enough of it on the weekend, see, you know? Yeah. Well, I only had one or two for the World Cup because I was, uh, all, of, all of my drugs from last week were, were slowly going out of the system. So I was okay. So um, I've got the last of my Little Goat Brewery beers this evening, which is a rich red Welsh ale called, I think it's called Sienkin or Sienkin. It's, it's that one near me put earlier. And, um, I mean, I poured it and it looks like a proper beer. Oh, yes. It's, do you know I what I mean? Look at that. Yeah. that looks like something you used to get in the wool pack back in the 70s. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so yeah. James is looking at it. Looks like that, yeah, that, that's that's escaped me. But that looks like something from Grand Slam. Like yes. Windsor Davis would be drinking that. Absolutely. Proper red ale. Yeah, proper, proper ale. Uh, it doesn't actually... I'm trying to find the percentage. It's only 4%. So, yeah. But in the same way as you can only have one or two tiny rebels of an evening because it's so sweet and sickly and all of that, I think I think that would last me about a good six or seven hours to finish that this evening boys so yeah it is there to be sipped cool all right um oh i did have a news desk one for you james as well i had uh, don't bother uh, yeah <laughs> don't bother. no i was working on it man i was working on it. i'll save it for next i'm gonna start recording them when they come to my head and then i can just play them back so jamie's news deck this week what, what have you got mate yeah so i'll start with um some jamie roberts news so, Jamie Roberts has been appointed to the WRU board as one of three non-executive directors. So, Roberts will be joined by former Wales player and coach Amanda Bennett and financial and commercial expert Jennifer Maffeus. Um, Kat Reed and Henry, sorry, Henry Engelhart are stepping down from the board. And Terry Cobner has been confirmed as the new WRU president to succeed Gerald Davis. Um, When I first saw the news, I'm not going to lie, my first thought was it feels a bit jobs for the boys, this appointment, you know, having Roberts on the board. 
But, you know, maybe it could be a good appointment. I'm not sure. Um, what do you guys think of it? Well, what I will say, uh, I'll come back to Jamie Roberts in a minute, but um, the the woman with the finance experience, is it Matthias? Is she the... the, the, the... A man, uh, sorry, Jennifer Matthias, yeah. Yeah, so she's a local girl to me, apparently. Apparently she's um, family involved in Pembroke Rugby Club. And apparently right. she's been, so she has got rugby connections um, and, and all that kind of stuff. So I, I don't know where I haven't heard of her before, I'll be honest, but apparently locally, very good um, reputation and all that kind of stuff from a uh, business point of view, which is kind of where we were looking at it before and saying nobody's yeah. got a frigging clue about business. So, yeah. Uh, Jamie Roberts, yeah, it, it does smacked a little bit of where we were before where you had to come through a certain route to get to the board and all of that but he's an intelligent guy um thinks about the game well and you, you do need a little bit of rugby experience in there to kind of balance things up so it, it could be you know the right kind of balance i hope it is he, he always comes across very well um i yeah. have invited him onto the pod uh, if anybody wants to find that tweet and keep liking it until he, he goes, okay, Christ, enough, boys. Um, but, yeah, he, um, I, I suppose it's the same as everything, isn't it? You, you give him a chance and see what they do. So, yeah. Yeah, it, it's just whether you feel he's got the right credentials to be on the board, isn't it, in terms of, like, having a commercial and business experience. You know, I'm not sure whether he's fully qualified for this role. But, like you said, he has got excellent rugby experience and, you know, he knows the game in Wales, so maybe it could be a, a good appointment. You know, I might be wrong, but uh, that was just my initial reaction. I thought, oh, a bit jobs for the boys, but we'll see how he gets on, you know. Mm. James, any thoughts? Nothing groundbreaking. It would be interesting. The problem is all the, all the appointments right now are just speculation. Uh, and there's, uh, and, you know, you can... Probably the only credible thing to say is that Jamie Roberts went his jobs for the boys. In that he's an ex-player, he's he's been pretty outspoken about the regions before. He has. You know, yeah. he's made some he's made some comments which, you know, it is it can be you know is that a worrying thing? Maybe he might have mellowed. Who knows? But I think it's too early to say. Yeah, these are really good appointments. These are really bad appointments. Because let's let's not forget when they announced this as well. Yeah, was in the was in the middle of a, what, a World Cup final. <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. It was, yeah. It was just, let's not forget, it, yeah. kicked off at eight. Was kicked off at eight p.m. Like the, 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 their poor, you know, social media officers tweeting this while watching the World Cup. Why have they announced it like that late? Mm. It, it's it's it's. It's one to come back to in, I think, six months' time when that, you know, board starts making decisions. Mm. I don't think it's one that I'm going to hang my hat on and say, this is a really bad appointment. But what they did okay. say, you know, when, through all the controversy last year, they did say that they were going to try and bring a bit of variety with the board with women and things like that. And from that box, that box is ticked. They, they, they're definitely making the effort, put it that way. Well, let's hope Jamie Roberts is more diverse in his views than he was his play style. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's it's not that. happening. Yeah, that's a fair point. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. Tidy. <laughs> oh, what else have we got, Jim? Oh, the Eddie Jones uh, shit show has finally come to an end. So um, Eddie Jones has resigned as Australia head coach just nine months into a five-year deal. Um, Jones met with Rugby Australia bosses on the weekend and they've amicably agreed to his departure. Um, he has been linked, of course, to move to Japan. There was reports that even before the World Cup started, he had a Zoom meeting, a job interview with uh, the Japanese Rugby Union about that position. Um, but he's insisting that he hasn't been approached by Japan and he's not had any job offers. Um it's hilarious, though, isn't it, this whole thing? I mean, this was the guy, by the way, who told reporters, I really take umbrage that people are questioning my commitment to coaching Australia. The doubt my commitment in the job is a bit red hot. 
you know? Mm. So he denied it, he denied it, he got very angry, very defensive, very quickly when the suggestions of the report started coming out about him leaving Australia, going to Japan. And it turns out that's exactly what he's going to do. Um, yeah, well, what are your thoughts on the whole uh, saga, Lee? I mean, Australia and rugby making Welsh <laughs> feel confident, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it's, I think there's a bigger picture going on, in all honesty, that we'll probably get to on a different day. But, you know, in the way world rugby is, and what I view, in, in fact, in the way world sport is, you know, you know, it's an entertainment industry now, and rugby isn't entertaining, and we're not presenting it as entertainment, you know. Um, even for those of us that do find, you know, that, uh, you know, 60 minutes of scrums, there are people that find that entertaining, you know, and, and there are people that will be really getting on board with that. So I, I just think the sport as a whole has got an image problem. And in Australia, it's really, really taken a hammer in because rugby league has gone and just gone, right, let's see how many people we can kill in the next five years. Let's Let's remove the whole head thing that's not an issue whack go oh, yeah go on crack on because people are going to go watch it because of the violence um despite the fact that they've got a bigger lawsuit against australian rugby league than i believe they, they have a, a the bigger lawsuit against australian rugby league than they have against the whole of the rest of the world rugby union um so you know then you've got cricket which it's a hot country and they play a lot of cricket and cricket in that part of the world at the minute with the IPL and all that kind of stuff is, is big business and it's been presented as big business and they've moved it. They've evolved it. They've gone, you know, this is, and, and then you've got Australian rules, which is just absolutely, again, let's have a fight for 30 minutes or so. And then somebody chuck a ball in, we'll do something with that. And then we'll have another fight, you know? Yeah. Um, and it's appealing to the Australian nation and rugby just there isn't the interest in it. And one way or another, I don't know, they, 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 they've got to do something. And I think Eddie Jones is suffering from years and years of decline in Australian. I don't, I, don't get me wrong, I've got no sympathy for the guy. I think he's a knob. But they've got a, 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 a terminal decline in the game in Australia. And if we're not careful... That that could spread. Genuinely, it could. Yeah, it could. Um, I mean, what I would say, I think Rugby Australia mind uh, got some responsibility to take here because mm. I didn't think they should ever go rid of Dave Rennie. Yes, I know they were struggling, but they were starting to turn a corner and they were nowhere near as bad under Dave Rennie than they were under Eddie Jones. They panicked. You know, they brought Eddie Jones in with huge fanfare now, they're out to the World Cup at the pool stage. You know, Rugby Union is way down the peck in order of other sports in Australia. You know, you've got Rugby League, you've got Aussie Rules, you've got cricket, you've got soccer. And I think this is going to set Australian rugby back a long way, I do. You know, they fucked mm. up royally here. I mean, the shit that Jones... I thought he played Australia, the Australian rugby boss, is like a fiddle. You know, the absolute bollocks he's come out with. Like, he, he told the Sydney Morning Herald, right? He said, I gave it a run. Hopefully, I'll be the catalyst for change. Sometimes you have to eat shit for others to eat caviar further down the track. I mean, the guy is full of shit, isn't he? He is full yeah. of shit. I mean, I rate him as a coach, but he played Australia rugby like an absolute fiddle. As soon as Japan came calling, yeah, he, that was fine. it. And I just think that's really, really shitty of him to do. But like I said, Australia rugby will pay the price for panicking and sacking a good coach in Dave Rennie for Eddie Jones. They took a gamble and it didn't pay off. What do you make of it, James, the old Eddie Jones shit show? I think Rugby Australia come out of this looking worse than Eddie Jones. I genuinely Possibly, do. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah. They, because I think whoever was in the role, I think if Rennie was still in the role, they'd still be in this situation. And the way Rugby Australia have handled the whole saga from, from 2019 World Cup, Essentially, you could probably argue it goes back a bit further, but from 2019 World Cup to to now, has just been a steady decline. Um, you know, let's not forget they had the whole Israel Falao thing hanging over them. They've had money problems. They've had uh, Super Rugby teams have been decline. 
you know, they're not horses they once were. And then you go and you rehire Jones, who, like you said, is I think he's a he is a good coach and track record yeah. proves it. Yeah. And then you 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 allow you facilitate. I'm 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 not to jump ahead a bit, but I I was thinking today who are Rugby Australia going to get in right mm. as that new head coach because a who wants to touch that. B, you know, are you brave enough to do that? You know, who, who's got the balls? And there's only two people who I think will go for that job. You know, one of them is Andy Friend, ex Connacht boss. Yeah, that's a good shot. Um, he's been linked to the job for a while. And the other one, no one has thought of, but I found out today, the new Leicester boss, Dan Keller, I believe his name is, has a clause in his contract he can leave Leicester at any time to go and coach Australia. His name's been mentioned. It was mentioned in the Sydney Morning Herald as a possible contender. Yeah. yeah. Do you know who I'd like so to that, see? I, I, it... Go on, go on, go finish on. it. Go on. No, it's so... Dave Flanagan. <laughs> <laughs> it's better than that. It's the Honey Badger. I don't, I don't think he'd be a great coach, but the after-match commentary would be absolutely fucking top-notch. What has he gone, by the way? Not, not to go on a tangent because it will go on for too long, but he was on the he was one of my favorite. He's the support Western Force, right, in Australia. He was great for about two seasons, played for the Barbar, scored some fucking tries, and then just oh, he was on The Bachelor in Australia. That was, that was it. He was gone. He, he no, they're now, the two names that I think the, they're the two names that have come up. Yeah. The other one, the other one. Well, no, actually, it wouldn't be Jamie Joseph because he signed a deal with the Hollanders. Um, yeah. So they're the two names. But I think Rugby Australia are equally to blame for facilitating the whole situation. Mm. And their mismanagement of the game has driven Rugby Union even deeper into the Ekin order. And they're only propped up by a vast number of private schools in Australia. Mm. That play rugby union, yeah. and the fact that they're lower than a, a a tiny little set of islands like Fiji, I fucking love that. I just <laughs> I thought uh, where Eddie Jones uh, remember he, he did that bit about have you seen Wales? A tiny little shitty place, and all, three million people. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck are they? Yeah, how big yeah. are we now, Ed? Yeah, fuck you. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, okay. Anything else on the on the news desk, Jim? Yeah, just one last bit of news, something you'll have an interesting, since I play the U rate uh, quite highly. So, former Scarlet's hooker David Hughes, he's joined Cardiff Rugby after the demise of Jersey Reds. Um, yeah, player who you know all about. I think that's a good pickup for Cardiff, isn't it? Lee? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, for one, he can throw into a lineup. Um, yeah. <laughs> which we'll talk about that on the Scarlet's later. But yeah, I mean, at the end of last season, Scarlet's had just had a, a, a dearth of. Of hookers, we had a serious amount of top quality hookers, um, yeah. and they've all just fucked off. They've all got, <laughs> and and um, yeah, and he he is an absolute. I mean, if he'd have stayed, and somebody else would have gone, nobody would have batted an eyelid in in terms of you know they're all at at that level. You know, it it was toss a coin, yeah. one of them's going, one of them's staying. So yeah, I think it's a great uh, a great signature for for Cardiff. Um, I'm surprised it wasn't made when he left, to be honest, when he was released. But mm. yeah, he, he's an outstanding player. Round the pitch, scrummaging, line out. Um, he's he's just a rock solid player and he'll give everything every game. That, that, that's the bit that I like him. You know, you can see the passion in his eyes and he's he's everywhere and he'll he'll give absolutely everything. So yeah, for me that's that's a great signing for Cardiff. Yeah, good pickup. Okay, um, that's all the news I have for tonight. Okay, so I've remembered what the song was. So I know it's too it's late a bit... now. Don't no, say no, it. It's too no, late. <laughs> no, it was, it was who let the dogs out? Who's on the news desk? Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy. Who's on the news desk? Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy. <laughs> right, just... when you do the edit, <laughs> can you edit that bit out, please? No. Edit that fucking thing out. No way. Oh. <laughs> It's all doing work today, Lee. <laughs> <laughs> they 
getting worse. I know. <laughs> right. Nice. Okay. Back to serious stuff. Uh, World Cup final on on the weekend. Uh, what did you make it? Did you enjoy? Do you enjoy it as a spectacle? What do we think? I did. I, I enjoyed I did. it. I it um, yeah, a lot, a lot. I saw a lot of complaints from like you know dinosaur journalists like Stephen Jones and other people on Twitter say dull game, boring spectacle. You know, no one of. World Cup final should be about. I thought it was gripping. I, I could not take my eyes off it. And just because it's a low scoring game doesn't mean it's a boring game by any means. I thought it was a really interesting game. And, you know, I think the first thing to say is congratulations to South Africa. That's a record fourth Rugby World Cup. Um, fair play to them. They are some team. But I thought that New Zealand fucked it. I have to be honest. I thought they had a number of opportunities that they didn't take. Um, I do feel for Sam Kane because that's going to stay with him now for the rest of his career. You know, being the guy sent off for the Rugby World Cup final, I thought it was the right decision. Personally, I thought Sia Khaleesi could have even seen red as well. You know, I, I I've seen a lot of people saying that could be red, so I thought maybe you know that could have gone the other way. And you know, you look at Moanga's missed conversion, you know, and then you go back to Jordy Barrett. There was that long range. Uh, penalty in the seventy third minute. You know they kick those goals. It's a different result there, doesn't it? You know, and I did feel for the All Blacks because I thought they were far more creative in attack than South Africa. But South Africa do what they do very well, don't they? You know, and uh, full credit to them. Yeah, I thought it was a good game. I I enjoyed it. James, what about you, mate? Mm-hmm. Really, really good final. So I was back home for this one. I watched it with my old man, who's Probably quite a casual viewer is probably the best way to describe. He's not the biggest fan of rugby. And he really enjoyed the final. Like, he commented on how well um, New Zealand were able to manage that game with 14 men. Mm. And I think it was Hugh Griffin of Pirate Pod said on Twitter, losing a back row is the easiest place to lose someone if you're going to get red carded. Because they don't you're not position reliant like a scrummager or a line out jumper, nor are you a big defensive leader like a center or or out wide like a winger. So New Zealand managed that really and they clearly trained for it as well, training with 14 men. I think Wayne Barnes got the big cause spot on. I thought, yeah. Definitely a red card from Sam Kane. I'd, I'd say Wayne Barnes got the big calls, the bunker, or the big call spot on. Uh, Sam Kane's was definitely red. I thought Lisey's was good enough mitigation for a yellow. Um, and Frizzell's, again, was a yellow card by the letter of the law. I don't think he, mm. you know, Frizzell's done a lot in his life, which I don't agree with at all. And I think he's a despicable human, but he didn't mean to do that to Bungyum Nambi. Um, but enough of the negatives. Fair play, South Africa. They, you know, the Dion Furion for 77 minutes, who was absolutely outstanding. Um, Waga Smith came on really. Um, I just can't speak highly of them enough. And I hate this talk of anti rugby, and they don't, you know, they're not playing winning rugby or good rugby. That's bollocks, old dinosaur shit. Right. The 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 right way to play rugby is the rugby that gets you the win. It, that that is the bottom line, and they played that to perfection on the weekend. So for for yeah. me, I think this this comes back to like the the marketing of the game and and all of that kind of stuff, because South African defence was absolutely immense. You look at how much you know. 65th, 70th, 75th minute, and they're still flying off that line like it's the first minute, and and you can see that there's there's an aggression in the fit, and they kind of killed that ball wherever they could and stopped New Zealand playing, and I think that's where they've done really, really well. I said in the autumn internationals that South Africa were winning games based on their defence, and that that's I think they won that World Cup based on their defence, you know, because their attack isn't particularly creative, it's not particularly exciting, straight running and offloading, you know, um, it's their defence that's stopping people from doing their stuff. So that's, you know, sometimes that needs to be celebrated, 
and and that's the bit that I don't think you know world rugby is is getting on top of they're not producing the the videos with the good legal hits you know they're not producing those um they're not marketing that game and going do you know what here bang this is intense you know you've got a 19 and a half stone guy this side and a 19 and a half stone guy this side and bang it, yeah and and the this is like two rhinoceroses hitting each other, you know. So there's, they, I think they're missing a trick on that because, yeah, it wasn't a particularly fantastic game. It wasn't an amazing game, but it, it was interesting. It was, yeah. you know, it was edgy as heat stuff and it was, there's a mistake, what's happening? Yeah, You know, somebody's made a mistake and you were just waiting for that one mistake and something could have gone over or, you know, it, it was that kind of game. So, yeah, but... The bit I liked about that game was the um, well after the game, uh, Kalosi went over to S4C and yes. spoke to S4C, yeah. which I think was really good. And you're like, Mike, uh, uh, Mike Phillips is standing there going like, "Holy fuck, he's going to come to talk. He's talking to us." Why? And then Oxnitch was was interviewed as well after, and he's by far my favourite South African player. Because he just everything revolves around cake, but but all of this stuff about you know your diets and your yeah. conditioning and all of this sort of stuff, and and some people revolve around the gym and he revolves around the bakery. And he was he was asked on <laughs> South African TV, uh, what cake was he going to have? Well, you know what cake was he going to have to celebrate? <laughs> <laughs> Said, well, I saw a rather nice cheesecake back at the hotel this morning just after we finished breakfast. Thought I'd save that till later. And this whole world revolves around cake. He's, he's, he's lining himself up for the, the World Cup final, but he can still remember what cake he saw just after breakfast in the morning. That's the kind of player that I can get along with. He's he's my yeah. kind of player. So, yeah, that's... That's where I saw the the World Cup final. I tell you what, though, I um I love Sia Khaleesi. He, he's just impossible to dislike, isn't he? You know, he's talked to us. He was talk. He was saying really nice things about Wales. You know, he's like I I knew they come good. They've done really well after everything. Which got final. He, he praised Jack Morgan. He's just a really, really genuinely lovely bloke. And I think I'm going to have to find his autobiography because I know he had a really, really difficult upbringing. He's got a fantastic yeah. story, and yeah. he. He is by far, in my opinion, and I did say this on Twitter, well, now X, that he is by far the most likeable Springbok ever, in my humble opinion. Because I know Springboks, they're not the most, they're not the neutral's choice, are they? It's fair to say. I mean, I was in the pub watching the game, and nobody was cheering for South Africa. Everyone wanted New Zealand to win. And I do think a lot of neutrals were hoping the All Blacks would win. I mean, I've got a lot of respect for the Springboks. You know, I have, and I don't mind them at all. I didn't mind who won. That final, but um, I think he just is such a likable, warm, lovely bloke, and mm. um, I was pleased for him as well. You know, I was really pleased for him because I, I think he's fabulous. But uh, it was a good final, like I enjoyed it. it. I found it quite gripping. I didn't take my eyes off it. Um, I thought the tournament as a whole was pretty good. I mean, some people are saying it's the best World Cup ever. I'm not quite sure about that, but I thought it was a very good and a very successful rugby World Cup. Mm. So where's the next I, one? The, we, the next, next one's in one? Australia. Yeah, I thought it was. Yeah, next one's in yeah. Australia. So it's going to be an yes. awful World Cup. <laughs> the last one was times, awful. Let's be it? fucking real. It's early morning kickoff time. So it's down there. Yeah. I, I think this Springbok squad as a whole is probably the most likable Springbok squad there's ever been. I can't think of anyone in that squad who. I might not like them on the field. No. I think fair play. I actually really like this this bloke. Like Ebenet of Beth, don't like him on the field. You know, he's a because he's that good. He's he's the last of the great enforcers. Off the field, nicest bloke go in, apparently. You know, Pollard seems great. You know, Manny Libbuck did a, uh, a little interview with Lauren Jenkins on Scrum Five. Um, the the rugby awards last year. He seems like a, uh, last night, he seems like a cracking bloke. So I think everyone in that squad, apart from Kovas Reinach, who has a said I'd like to punch, um, mm-hmm. is, is really likable. Uh, and my second thing is Ospreys now have two former players who won World Cups. Two. 
<laughs> you must be Marvin Ori. Marvin Ori. Right. And Ricky January. Back in oh, 07 was our other one. That was Ricky January. Was Europe. But no, I, on, a, on a serious level, I thought the winners. Okay. I, I, wanted, I said this in the chat, I wanted New Zealand to win because I thought it would be a it would be a great benchmark for New Zealand for when Razor comes in, going from where they were and uh, losing the series to Ireland, you know, they lost Argentina a couple of times to 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 go in. Yeah, we've won the World Cup again, mm-hmm. but equally South Africa winning it, just you know, you equally see lift the trophy, puts a smile on your face, yeah. and you can't be kindly enough for the bloke and and. Every, Everyone involved, really, apart from Rassi. <laughs> well, I interviewed um, Rito, uh, Rito Sungwani from the Stormers um, a couple of weeks ago, which is on the Scarlet's pod. And he speaks very similarly to um, a lot of the guys from the, the Springboks setup. And because it's all about, you know, we're all as one, we all work together and all of that kind of stuff. So I don't think it's just the national team. I think it yeah. it goes down the pyramids. And I think people are genuinely appreciative of the opportunity to play the game, to play the game on the world stage. And they're there and they're kind of like, I'm going to love it. I'm just, no matter how we, how we do it, I'm going to love it. And, and I think that runs through coaches, club sides, everything. So it's a mentality more than it is a, a game out there. So um, as we're on the World Cup final, I will total up our final scores, okay? Uh, so we said we were going to invite the, the winner on. So in third place in our league, it's just our league, all right, is someone called Precariat, who's 5,353. Second place, Morgan D, 5,491. And in top place is Sir Dumpelode, who had 5,521. Um, so, yeah, now the problem I've got there is Carwin started the league. So I don't know if we can contact these people. I don't know if we can do anything, but we'll try and find a way of getting them on on the pod. And hopefully, yeah, Sir Dumpelode can come in there and give us a few kind of bits of... Um, advice on how to run a, a fantasy league because every time i finished on saturday night so we got to the final whistle and i was in 45th place i was like oh that was shit and then i put the phone down i picked the phone up about an hour later i was in 47th and then i picked it up on sunday and i'm in 50th I'm like fucking stop <laughs> <laughs> you know <laughs> and nobody's done anything so um but yeah as uh, uh, thank you for everyone. I think it was over a hundred odd people in our league, so yeah, it was, it yeah, was good. good stuff, good, yeah, and enjoyable. So, mm-hmm. we'll very briefly mention some other international rugby. Wales played the Barbarians on Saturday, but the cool people will be down at Parker Scarlet watching Scarlet and Cardiff. <clears throat> so, if you want to go to watch Wales Barbarians, fine, crack on. But the cool people, the interesting people, the people that care about proper rugby. Will be down at the park, and it'll be fucking howling a gale. That's well, it. can I just say I could not give less of a fuck about the Wales Barbars game. Mm. I have got zero interest in it. I hate this game for the fact it screwed over our four regions. It's devalued the Welsh derby. Yes, Nigel Walker admitted it was an error, but that's no good now. Our teams, our four regions, should not be competing with the governing body. The whole thing is a farce. They'll mark it to death now in the WRU because they'll say, this is the last chance for you to see the half penny in a whale shirt. And, you know, this is your opportunity to see Alan Wynne Jones again. And, you know, they'll really hammer home that narrative. But uh, I think it's absolutely cynical, this game. I-, I think it's a waste of time. I won't be watching any of it. I'll be a Romney parade watching Newport County versus Oldham in the FA Cup. Um, I don't even want to watch Munster Dragons, to be perfectly honest with you. I might even I might even switch off from rugby altogether, but I am not going to bother watching it. And no, I've just got zero interest. 
in it whatsoever. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you are going, I hope you all have a nice time. I'm sure, you know, there'll be lots of families there and, you know, people on the jolly and they enjoy it. It's a good entertaining game. But uh, no, not for me. Mm-hmm. I really don't like this game and the, the consequences of this game as well. Mm-hmm. Sorry. So talking about games that Jamie doesn't like, Dragons versus Cardiff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're not doing that first, are we? I thought we were going to start with our space first. No, we're going to do it in uh, in reverse order. So, um, yeah, Dragons versus Cardiff. Now, we've, we've not got a Cardiff representative on here, Jay, so you can accuse them of all sorts of stuff. You know, you can really go to town on them if you want. But, um, yeah, what did you think of the game, mate? Look, anyone who knows this part and listened to me say why I hate this game. I hope you watched that on Sunday and you finally understood why I hate this game so much, why I think it's such a hateful derby. Um, Look, I think the first thing to say about this game, I have been to a lot of games of Only Parade, right? Quite a few. Uh, Beat the floor football games as well. That was the worst atmosphere I've ever experienced of Only Parade. It was so weird. It was flat, there was no pre-match buzz whatsoever. It was very subdued. And look, you know, I've seen people come up with a few reasons for it. You know, people saying, well, you know, it was on a Sunday. Uh, you know, it's not an ideal time. And, you know, having a Welsh derby in the second round. And, you know, there's not enough Welsh internationals. I mean, I don't buy the Sunday argument because, you know, we've played Cardiff on Sundays before. We've had much better atmospheres um, when we played Munster last season, when we beat them. That was on a Sunday. That was a really good atmosphere. But um, I've not experienced anything like it at Rodney Parade. I could not believe how subdued and flat it was. You know, it was like nobody could really be bothered to be there. Nobody really wanted to be there. It was very, very strange. I mean, from a Dragons point of view, it was a disaster before a ball had even been kicked because Dan Lager, too, was due to make his debut for the Dragons. You know, it was a big hoo-ha about it, but videos and, and all the rest of it. He had to pull out for personal reasons. So wish him all the best, obviously, because we don't know what's going on there. But that was before ball was kicked. So straight away that disrupted, you know, the Dragons. Um, and that meant that we had a back row then of George Knott, Sean Lonsdale and Harry Keddy, which is not ideal. Whoa. Yeah, exactly. Um, Rodrigo Martinez um, limped off after just 10 minutes. Then after that, we had both Lonsdale and Keddy missing they they went off the field through concussion so what that meant was then we had a back row of ben carter george knott and james benjamin who is a flanker turned, turned hooker and uh, you look at him now and he's not conditioned for the back row to say the least um yeah so we were right up against it from the start and what that meant was when you got a back row like that you've got zero breakdown threat we had no fetches in our back row and we had no ball carriers and we was up against a Cardiff back row that contained Ellis Jenkins and Thomas Young. Mm. So that was only ever going to go one way. And straight away, we were at a disadvantage. Um, it was a terrible game, wasn't it? And it always is between these two teams. This is why I hate it, because it's always the same story. You've got a poor team up against an average team, where the average team always wins, and they serve up an absolute shit show. For the supporters. It's a truly diabolical derby. It is by far the worst in the league. I've always said it. Harley did match me to say it's the worst derby in the world. <laughs> and I think he might be right. Because it really is a horrible, horrible game. Um, I mean, I've seen people say Dragons never look like scoring a try in that game. I mean, our attack was pretty poor. But it's not entirely true. Because in the second half, Dane Black had put through a grubber kick. And Jared Ross had all the time in the world to gather the ball, dot it down, and he knocked it on. And look, you know, I will cut him with a little bit of slack because it was a slightly awkward bounce, but you've got to score those, haven't you? You've got to score those. Um, I think Cardiff, they weren't great either. Let's be honest, they're no great shakes, but what they did do is they did kick very well. And I thought their half-backs controlled the game well. Uh, Thomas Williams was pretty good. Tina Stabia from what I've seen of him, looks a decent pickup for them, doesn't he? You know, he's putting in all those doink kits going over the defence, and that was quite useful for them. Um, you know, their only try came from our mistake um, through Angus O'Brien, who I have to say, as much as I love, he had an absolute shit of a game 
really, really terrible game. I mean, his decision making was just wrong. Every decision he took was just wrong. You know, that charge down kick, why is he kicking? It was never on. All he had to do was fling the ball right, you know, throw it to the right side, and then we probably would have gone over. But he kicks the ball, gets charged out. Mason Grady runs off and scores. Um, look, Cardiff deserved their win, but, I mean, it was just really, really weird. It was a horrible game, horrible atmosphere. I never want to experience a game like that again. Um, it was just really, really weird. I've got nothing positive to say about it at all. But I'll, I'll say one positive. I'll, I'll give one positive. I thought Bradley Roberts did incredibly well. Um, really well. He was the he, he was the one player I thought who really stood up for the Dragons. His set piece work was really good. His ball carrying was good. Apparently, he was our top tackler as well. Um, I thought he put in a lot of work. I thought, to be fair, James Benjamin and Ben Carter worked hard in the back row. You know, all things considered, they were out of position, but I thought they worked incredibly hard. But yet again, this was another missed opportunity by Dragons and you know Chris Kerwin is saying it's 16 losses against them in a row but BBC and everyone else is saying 70 whether it's 16 or 17 I mean it's just it's embarrassing isn't it and it's a mind block it's a definite mind block because even after the game Dyke Flanagan said we seem to put pressure on ourselves against Cardiff and listen to the negativity of this run and how many we've lost we need to turn up full of optimism but the mindset it's hard to shift until we win. So he's basically admitted it now. He's been saying what I've always said about this game with Cardiff and Dragon. It is a mind block and a mind sh- a mindset that they just can't seem to get over. And yeah, it was just it was a grim afternoon, to be honest. It was a poor performance, grim afternoon. Um yeah. It was just fucking grim, wasn't it? For everyone concerned. Horrible. I mean, did you watch it? I mean, what do you allow to make as neutrals watching this game? What did you think? Um, of it? Do you think that was a good advert for regional rugby? No, there's no good advert for regional rugby. We're shit, Jamie. <laughs> no, to uh, be fair, there are some entertaining dubs. Scarlet no, Ospreys are always good games. I, right. So I watched this game on a coach back to London. Right. And I was really frustrated by the Dragons. That was the best way to describe it. it from watching it on the telly and just frustrating. And, and, I hadn't looked at the stats until today, and the the one that gets me is uh, set plays, right? Because we mentioned Bradley Roberts, his darts are probably the best they've been, you know, consistently. Um, so, Dragons had sixteen lineouts in that game and won ninety four percent of them. Okay, you won 83% of your scrums, which doesn't seem like a lot, but when you look at Cardiff, who won 57% of their scrums and only 75% of their line outs, that's a platform you have to build on. Mm. Right. And uh, but unfortunately they just couldn't do it. And and I think it just comes back to I looked at that Dragons pack on Saturday, and I there is no dynamic carrier apart from Bradley Roberts. No. There is no dynamism coming out of there. And it's, it shows because Bradley Roberts carried the ball 22 times that on the weekend. The nearest yeah. person or people carrying numbers-wise were Thomas Williams and Cameron Winnett on 11. Mm. And that just shows how much the Dragons are relying on one player. And I love Lydia, don't get me wrong, and, and, and he's a fantastic player, but in his play, he's there simply for your first up defence. That's where your your Ollie Griffiths needs to be firing all cylinders at eight because he's a dynamic ball carrier. He's a threat over the ball, and then behind the ball, then Aim Blacker didn't have a good game. I thought I thought he really struggled in that number one. Roger Williams came on and changed the game for Dragons. I thought you know he's he good. Yeah, what six defend? He beats five six defenders in. Will Reed came on, looked all right. Um, you know, had a bit of spark. Uh, you're, you're clearly crying out for Justin Hewitt's company, Justin Hewitt Rio Dyer to get back in there, even if it's to competently chase kicks like he does with Gatland. Yeah. You know, and, and you go on to Cardiff then, and Harley and any other Cardiff fans, because that is a side that should be scoring tries, man. They're just not. And, you know, they never look like scoring either. 
you know, Tina Stabia was great off the boot. You know, Cardiff kicked, what, 41 times on the weekend? That's a lot. But they were good. Most of the time, they were good. You know, Halaholo starting to get back into fitness. Grady, you know, is still really raw. I mean, times as well. Mm. Um, you know, Thomas Williams, nine. And then you go into that pack. And Cardiff suffer from ball barriers. And not enough strong set piece gurus, essentially. You know, Reese Carey can come on and carry the ball, turn the ball over all he wants. He can't scrum. You know, Liam Belcher is not a scrummaging hooker. He's really not a throwing in one either, but he's not a scrummaging hooker. You know, Cardiff have to sort that set piece out. And, and you know, it's just, it was such a frustrating game to watch. It was all but it really was. What did you think of it? Did you did you watch this game? Did you have the misfortune of watching this? Like I say, I really enjoyed it because I I cancelled my uh, <laughs> oh, no I, I I did I I cancelled my um uh my via play uh, thing at the end of last season, so I didn't watch it. So uh, yeah, I was listening to it on the radio and pottering around the house and getting jobs done. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it even sounded for the funniest bit for me <laughs> was. The the guy on the radio said, um, you know, we've had we've had an extra hour in today and we decided to come here and watch this. <laughs> and, yeah. and I don't think he meant to be sarcastic or anything, but that's definitely how I came across. I got an extra hour today. Fuck me. I could have done something with that hour and I chose to spend it here. But yeah, it is what it is, guys. It is but what it the is. The worrying thing as well, and I, I you know, I'll just talk about yeah. this. So I talk about the atmosphere. Yeah. The attendance is really worrying for this fixture, yeah. okay? So we had an attendance of 5,272, which apparently is the lowest for this fixture since 2017. Um, like I said, that along with the weird atmosphere, I don't think helped because Dragons weren't given anything for us to cheer about either. There were a considerable large amount of people leaving early. And I've seen a few Dragon supporters com- comment on this as well. So... At one stage, I know that I think it was like with 15 minutes left, me and my dad were the only ones in our row. Bearing in mind, we were sat in the full row, 15 minutes left. We looked at him and I went, oh, we're we the only ones here. Where's everyone gone? It was that boring and that awful that people were leaving early. And if you're a neutral, right, if you're not like a, a Dragons fan or you don't follow cards, you just turn up, you know, for you know, just as a casual fan, that is not going to get you coming back, is it? You know, yeah. that was an absolute shit show. And, you know, I am concerned about the attendances in Regional Rugby. I know we'll talk about the Ospreys later on. They only had 3,000 there in Swansea mm-hmm. for that game. You know, 3,017, um, to be precise. And that, in a 21,000-seater stadium, is not a good look. No. Now, I just thought it was really sombre weekend I did for Regional Rugby. And I am concerned about the attendances. But, you know, I do want to give credit to Cam Winnett, mind because he's a very yeah, talented young fullback. Really and Angus O'Brien was determined to pepper him with these high balls. And every single time, he gathered it comfortably. He never looked flustered. And for a young kid, I know there's been a lot of talk about him being a, a Welsh national. I definitely think he could be a future Welsh national. He's very impressed with Cam Winnett. But um, yeah, going back to what James said, this was a game where Dragons really needed the likes of Ollie Griffiths, Alan Wainwright, Tane Basham, and Cardiff rushed back their internationals. You know, we saw him bringing Domachowski Williams and that, and that frustrated me a little bit. So whose decision was it then not to bring in the likes of, you know, Tane Basham, or Elliot D? Because we could have played them. Is that Dyke Flanagan's decision or is that decision made for the WRU? But uh, it just seems strange to me that Cardiff will have to rush their internationals back and, you know, Dragons didn't do that, you know, when we needed those players. But... Um, yeah, this was a very forgettable derby. It was a grim day, weird atmosphere, strange. Um, yeah, n- not not a good game. Um, yeah, that, that's all I've got to say about it, really. But yeah, okay. So let's let's move on and talk about the attendance at the Ospreys. I mean, the good thing with that attendance, James, is you you literally could have gone round and said hello to every single person in the stadium, mate. You could have made some nice friends on on Saturday day. Oh, from Chibanos, I knew I knew after. <laughs> <laughs> how how empty does oh, it feel? Yeah, no, you, you... <laughs> right. In, in all defence of the crowd there, 
for 3,000 odd, they didn't sound like 3,000. Especially, you know, I'm so I'm in the middle of the East stand, you know, the ultras, whatever you want to call them. They're, the ultras. They're, they're, allowed, they're, they're allowed, but all right. But in, in all seriousness, it didn't feel like 3,000 in terms of, you know, when they were cheering or jeering, whatever you want to say, didn't feel like that. It just looked it. And I could see it from the moment I got to uh, the stadium at like 11 a.m. to go have breakfast. You could just tell that this wasn't going to be a highly attended game. And actually, you know, all the adults, Osprey's fans on Facebook, you know, who are a strange bunch, were calling them fans out and saying, you know, you say, you say, you're all talk, no trousers, basically, to, to say the WIU are killing the game, all this, all that shit. You don't turn up because it's a one of the guys and it's on scrum five and it's a bit cushy for you. You know, and and, and the, the Ospreys put on so much for the kids. They try and do, you know, the, you know, they put the, the you so you would have seen the cardboard. So they got out for the two hundred and first pound off the to the celebration around Tipperick as well. You know, they they do put an effort in, and, and you know, Dragons do the same as well. They put a load of stuff for the kids on. Scarlets do. Cardiff probably, you know, talk about in a circle, talk about how they used to be amazing. Um, but to have only 3,000 there is soul splintering. That's mm. the best way I can describe it. And, you know, it is you're starting to see the hardcore ones not coming back. This makes sense. The bit I don't concern. understand with, with this, yeah, was they were hundreds of comments about playing a game away here. So this this week's game that we'll preview in a minute is away in London and all that kind of stuff. And how am I going to get there? And how am I going to do this? And all this kind of stuff. And then, like Jamie said, you know, Sunday, three o'clock, whatever, we, why can't we play Saturday on a three o'clock? You've got a Saturday three o'clock kickoff. You've got a home ground. You've, you've got, you know, the weather was actually okay. It was great, but it was it was okay. And you're playing a team that is actually building a bit of a reputation. I cannot understand why more people are not going. Yeah, when 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 we spoke to um, what's the commercial director Anthony Cole, Anthony Cole yeah. Johnson? Yeah, and he was talking about the amount of interest in the shirt and how the Ospreys brand spreads around the country and spreads around the world. Fuck's sake, boys! You've got to start in Swansea because yeah. you know uh, I, I'll, I'll tell you about the frustrations of Scarlets in a minute. But to me, if I was an Osprey, first of all, I'd have to poke both eyes out and remove my tongue. But if I was an Osprey, you know, I I'd, I'd be going fucking nuts at that. I genuinely would. And, and for me, the the worst bit is then the stuff that. There's no good excuse for a fan at the minute to say, hmm. you know, all right, all right. You, you could say cost of living crisis. I don't want to part with the money for a season ticket. Okay, that's fine. I'm not never going to berate someone for um, not being able to afford, uh, you know, less, which is a kid's game, you know, a hobby. We've got the cheaper season ticket. Okay, you've got. All right, the Liberty or the Swansea.com stadium is not ideal. We know this. And people keep pointing out the fact that we have 3,000 in a 21,000 seater stadium. Like, it's something new to us. Like, we don't look around at the empty fucking seats every week and go, oh my God, the fuck we just got you. Mm. Yeah, we know it's not good. You know, it's not in, it's not the right place for us, right? We know this. And we're just as frustrated. And we're just as frustrated with bureaucracy and, St. Helens happening and not happening and still being rumoured to happen and you know we know this and, and there's no answer to it there's no answer to it than the plea to say you've got to come out you've got to you've got to come watch the boys you know and Ospreys are doing that they just opened a um, store in Shopping centre in Swansea, or part of the Rugby Heaven store, is now entirely Ospreys dedicated. 
There's the Macron store in Swansea and Neath. And I, and I got my first chance to look at the Macron stuff on the weekend, right? And is you know, and I won't lie, I've been near to in the past. There's some good stuff in there. Okay. The jerseys look good. You know, I said, you know, some of the advertising they're doing, you know, local indie wrestling shows, right? That, that's never, you know, I can't remember that being done before. You know, it reminds me of when Cardiff did that flash mob back in like 2013 or whatever with Robin Copeland. You know, stuff that, you know, they got the fantastic, Ospreys in the community do fantastic work, right? Yet people just will not get off their ass and come watch. And it's so fucking frustrating. And it's not like they're going to watch Neath or Swansea or Aberavon either or Bridgetton, right? Because their numbers aren't. They, they they just want TV watching experience of oh brilliant one one o'clock three o'clock kickoff on a Saturday I'm in the house let's get on you know rather than being in the stadium supporting the team and then you get onto the rugby side of it yeah are we are we moving on to the rugby yeah yeah go on. yeah tell us about the game mate tell us about the game there's a lot been were really, really game uh, in that the zebra should have won and all, all this. I don't think so. I think Osprey's got which we're notorious for doing and two soft tries. Okay, we're twelve nil down after eight minutes or whatever it is. Then we go and start controlling the game. We score two lovely try, and let's, I want to talk about that first try. What a try. I mean, if, if if that was a Harlequin scoring that try or a Leinster or or Stormer scoring that try, there'd be a lot more said about it. And I shared it on my social. I said it was a beautiful yeah, try. Yeah, and, and a, lot, lot. a lot of people a lot of people did, and it, it was a lovely try. And Max Nagy does really well to keep that in. He does, he, yeah. You know, he gives it off Tipperick, who, you know, at 34 still, he's just, he's just so, so quick. And then there's some great support play from the two Morrises and Ruben Moore Williams goes under the post set. It's the rugby that the, the casual fans want to see. And then the next try, Prothero runs it back, cuts back inside. All of a sudden, yeah, he's waggling the finger in the Italian's face and scoring a try. I didn't like that. I got to be honest with you. I, 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 I didn't like it either. Know? And And... In all fairness to Prothero, he, the first thing he said to Tom Booth after the game was, I'm really sorry that I did that. Oh, he apologised you know, to me? Uh, okay, I didn't know. Yeah, that. he's apologised, and he apologised to the player as well. And I, I think I read, I read today that it was, you know, bad injury woes. It was almost like letting it out. You know, that was him saying, right, you know, I'm back. This is what I can do. You know, I'm still here. And, and he is a cracking player, but... You know, and then, and then we go back to uh more tried and trusted stuff. We we, we hit big runners, Nicky Smith, Morgan Morris, these these types of players. And, and the only re- we just had soft defence, and Zebra exploited that. But we knew that anyway. Let's give full credit to Zebra. We knew the game plan they were going to come with. They love to spread it wide. They love to. Uh, and and they've started out to develop this game where they go up the jumper a bit more. You know, that's that's not a revolutionary thing. You know, you only have to watch the Ulster game last week to see that they've got a crack in ten in is it Piscatelli or something like Priscatelli? in ten. They've got Bruno, they've got Jesse. Um, forwards as well. You know, this is not it is not a mug team. They are a good rugby side who or the Ospreys out with lapses in defence. I don't think their crossfield kick try because Ospreys had two players down on that wing. The, the main one being Don Morris, who was down on that wing. The ref could have called that back. You know, it happened to England against Wales in in Hollywood when uh, Dan Bigger kicks that ball crossfield to to Jadzi and and Josh Adams goes over. You know, so like that. Actually, it was just a it was a fun game. It was a really easy game. So if you're gonna say to a casual viewer to get them into rugby, here's a game where both teams score tries and what nine tries in the game, um, back and forth, 
bit of aggro. Um, yeah, why why not? The only ne- the other negative is Osprey's got so injuries again. Worrying going up to London next week with New Orleans internationals. Who Sutton went off injured. Prothero and Garen Phillips failed at HIA. Hopefully they'll be back. Tom Morris had to go off. Ruben Morgan Williams had to go to the wing. Um, so that you know, we'll, we'll come on to that. Uh, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. But I don't think it's necessarily all doom and gloom uh, from from an Osprey's point of view. Mm. We've had five points, haven't we, from two games? Yes. Or is it more than that? <laughs> That's more than we've got, mate. Six, <laughs> this point, is six, six points one. from two games. Uh, no. Five points from this game, one point from last game. Yeah, six, yeah, six, for, six out of ten. So that's a good return, isn't it? Because you had to go to Connor to weigh. That's that's not yeah. bad at all, really. And we, I tell you what, we said last, I said last week, Deborah are a banana skin team for us. We never play we well against Zebra. Yeah. And actually, we... The Glasgow result, who had all the Scottish internationals back, went to Connaught and had the exact same result as us, which I think was our result at Connaught well, and we played in the second half. So, sorry to cut you off there, Jim. That's, that's just two points. Uh, yeah. Oh, I was just about to say, how good was Justin Tipperick? I mean, oh. he really did deserve that play with the match. And yeah. I actually think, I don't know if you agree with this or not, I think if he wasn't playing, I think Sibu would have won. Because he was absolutely everywhere, Tipperick. He was always in the right place at the right time. I thought he was brilliant. Um, Just yeah. I you've got him all season, never know, and that's the good mm. thing, you know. Yeah, well, he's, he looks like he's enjoying rugby. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that that that's such a refreshing thing to see because knowing tips it and knowing how hard he works as a player, he worked so hard. He did great Nick and and all this. He just looks like he's having fun. Like he's, he's, you know, you could say he's literally letting his hair down. <laughs> How long is it now? Bloody hell. Oh, it's really long, no, isn't it? Josh Gardner on the, on the, on the, on the ring, he's been growing this suit since he got injured for the Lions. <laughs> I, 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 I'm of the opinion his wife has left him and he's just putting on a brave face, but he's, this is his only outlet. <laughs> Um, I re- I reckon he's he's lost. No, he's a just day. he looks like he's enjoying his rugby. Yeah. I re- I reckon he's lost a day, he's right? Mates to do a day. No, he's, he's lost. Bloke ever. He's lost. He's lost a day, or he's lost a bet, or something, and he's not allowed to cut his hair until he gets like a hat trick or something. Do you know what I mean? Or he's he re- slotted a drop goal. There, there, there's some kind of clause in the mates agreement that that's really going to tuck him up. For, that's why he's not allowed to retire. Because he's got to try and find a way of having a drop goal or a, a, a he's hustle. not allowed to retire because we'll we'll cease to exist if he does. <laughs> it was a good game though, wasn't it? Like I, I don't know yeah. what you, what you thought of it. I thought it was really entertaining. But just a quick word on Seba, and I've said this on the pod. I said it on the Dragons pod, they're going to win a couple of games this year, Seba. Yeah. If they could sort out their defence, if they could cut the errors, they are going to win a couple of games. And Dragons want to be very careful because the, the way the fixture list is right. Because Zebra looked dangerous. And you could easily argue that they could be two from two now. Because they should have beaten Ulster and they could have beaten the Ospreys. And it's good it's good for the league, isn't it, in fairness? Yeah. But uh, as a Dragons fan, I am concerned. But it, it was an entertaining enough game, though, Lee, wasn't it? What did yeah, you think it was. It? And it, yeah, I was I was definitely torn between um, you know, there were parts in that game was ever ahead, and I was like, This this is good. I mean, I'm enjoying watching the Ospreys <laughs> lose. But then there was a little bit of me going like, shit, what are they going to do to us? Or maybe they could, maybe, maybe the Osprey, maybe I might encourage a bit of the Osprey there. So, yeah, you know, as a neutral watching the game, it was it was a good game to watch. And this goes yeah. back to what I was saying before about how we market the game, how we, you know, even our commentators are, are still, even the, even the most excitable commentators that we've got there, I'm still quite. Oh yeah, that was a good try and all that kind of stuff. And Paul Williams, you, but you just oh. yeah, you, but you just want to get into you. Um, so tabs, uh, um, that does your yeah. your ground and all of that. He does your stuff. It, it, I love him. I, I think he's great because he adds he's to great, the atmosphere. Yeah, and 
you know, we, we put him and Darren on a, a bloody bonus pod a couple of weeks ago, and I was, you know, there, there was electricity coming out of the pod. But you know, that there, there's enough people there that that can can make the atmosphere, can give the enjoyment, and it's just not coming through. And and I don't think that's an Osprey thing. I think that's a I think that's a Welsh rugby thing. I think it's bigger. I think it's probably a Wales thing. Um, and I'll tell you why in a minute when we talk about the Scarlets. But yeah, I just, you know, I think we 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 need to understand our relationship with the game again. I really do. I I, I think we need to as soon as soon as we have a bad weekend, as soon as all four regions lost, oh, no, we can't afford four regions. Blah, 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 blah. Fuck off. And you know, let's just go and enjoy the fact that we've still got professional teams that can still go out there and play. Let's if you if you're running out on that pitch. You know, you're not trying to have a shit game. Angus O'Brien didn't try to have a shit game, Jamie. I know, I, I know, I know. You're not saying that he tried to, but sometimes no. it happens. You know, yeah. and just fucking everything goes wrong. When that happens, you know, if you're running out onto that pitch, you want to hear that crowd behind you. You want to, you want to know that whatever happens, there's ten thousand people standing behind you that are going to still think you're the dog's bollocks when you walk off that pitch, and. That's the bit that we're missing, you know, and we're missing out in every club in every region. And the WIU get it two or three times a year at the Millennium Stadium, where everyone's bollocks and and there's hen nights and stag nights and all of this kind of bollocks. No fuckers watching that game. They're all just pissed and they're out there having a, 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 a thinking they're having a laugh. We've lost our relationship with the game, and Swansea is seeing that. Just as a city, Swansea is seeing that more than anywhere else. I think if you took that game and you put that game, you know, Carwin was always a fan of put it in the null. I think if you put it in the null and you've got 3,000 people in the null, it sounds better. I think if you put it in the null, you get an extra 1,000 people in there. You put it in Bridgend, you get an extra 5,000 people in there. Do you know what I mean? And I think it's yeah. one of those those things that actually – this might be a really good opportunity now for regions to go, well, do you know what? Yeah, we are going to go do something different. We are going to go play in in, in um, London, you know? Scarlets can go and, yeah, we're going to go play in uh, Aberystwyth because you fuckers won't come and watch us in Lethley, so we're going to go and play in, in Aberystwyth. Yeah? Well, do, do you know what's really the, the bit... I always love about any Ospreys game, right? It is, is it happens in every game. The kids go up to the barrier and they all want their shirt or their program mm. or their thing signed. And in this one in particular, because it was Tips's nine hundredth game or whatever, all the Banos Junior section were there and various other ones, Kevin Cribbord and and just their faces lighting up. Uh, their hero is coming over uh, and then screaming for the younger players as well. Mm. No, in no world did I think when I watched him in university that a little child would be screaming Hugh Sutton's name to come sign his shirt. <laughs> and that's all love and respect to Hugh Sutton. You mm. know, I've seen him many times in walkabout, uh, he, you know, dance floor in, in university, but I never in a million years did I think. But then I, he, neither did he. Mm. I mean, I, I, and every time I get doom and gloom about the attendances, the finances, the, the, the shit show that is the governing body. Just seeing that junior section's face light up when you know, Owen Williams walks over, you know, where that that makes it all worth it. And then seeing, and then on the other hand, just seeing how good some of them young players for Ospreys are playing as well. I want to give a shout out to Lewis Lloyd and Wales under twenty soccer. On top of being the most handsome man in rugby at the minute. <laughs> He comes on and he is so good. He's so dynamic. He, he really just wants it. Mm. And if Ethan Lewis wasn't playing as well as he is at the minute, I think he'd be back up to, to, to Sam and Dewey. You know, I think he'd be that number three. Uh, Ethan Lewis has come to the Ospreys and with a bit of a point to prove after being shunned out by Cardiff. Gone to Saracens, not really got the game time he he, he wanted, um, and he's he's coming. He's top in dominant tackle charts, top in tackle charts, carries. He's aggressive. His set piece is solid. 
you know, there's so much to like about this young Osprey squad. And I really hope I get a chance to talk to to Rob. Be squidge. He's he he's the same. He's got all the same forums and me and chat rooms, or whatever. The young hungry squad who wants to play for that badge, and there's a good culture there. They just need the fans behind them. That's all that they need because they showed it last year. They beat Montpellier away, away, and they beat uh, Montpellier at home, and then they took thousand odd fans up to Saracens, and you know, apart from Reese Webb steroid, I mean Braden farts, um, we would we would have won. I'm confident of that. Yeah. We need and, to be more positive, not... though, don't we, about yep. the regional game? And, and I get what you're saying, I really do, Andre. But at the same time, we can't turn a blind eye to the problems either. And I don't think it's negative mm. to just point out the concerns. Like, why was yeah. there such a low crowd for that, that mm. derby on Sunday? Why was the atmosphere really quiet and subdued? The other thing I forgot to mention as well, Cardiff fans, they always come down in droves to, to, to Rodney Parade, right? Because you don't just get them coming from Cardiff. You get them coming from Gwent as well. There's a lot of uh, Cardiff fans in places like Caffini, Blackwood, so There weren't many Cardiff fans there at all yesterday. Very, very few. There's a smattering on the North Terrace. There was a couple scattered yearning everywhere in the Bisley. But that game was so strange. And I just wonder, are people a little bit rugby out, you know, with the, yeah. the lack of success the regions are having? It's really hard, isn't it, to, to get that enthusiasm? Because my concern is, as you know, I've always said this, when the hardcore fans start walking away, then all four teams are going to be in real shit, you know, and it's started to happen. And that's my worry. That's why I said on X today, it is concerning. But yeah, this it's a fine balance to strike. Yeah, let's be positive. Let's not be too doom and gloom, but also don't turn a blind eye to the problems. And it's right yeah. to discuss them. So talking of problems. <laughs> let's, I think we need to move for this next bit. Yeah. Too. So, nice segue, Daily. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm very briefly going to um, uh, cover the Stormers game against the Scarlets. And I'll give you a quick heads up now. If you've got any kids in the room, send the fuckers out now because there's going to be a lot of swearing. Cause it was fucking awful. It was fucking diabolical. Um, it was. It, we couldn't tackle. We couldn't run. We couldn't pass. We couldn't kick. Fuck me, we couldn't even do our hair properly. It was absolutely shit from start to finish. There was like 10 minutes in the first half and 10 minutes in the second half where some of the boys went, I might actually turn up and do what I'm fucking well paid to do. It was <laughs> just fucking not on. It really wasn't. It was, you know, I get the whole thing about going to South Africa. Yeah, and, and some of the blame for this lies within the management that fucked up pre-season, spent 16 weeks fanny around doing fuck all. Apparently, we didn't do a fucking coach in a, on how to defend. I mean, we've got a new defense. Gareth Williams, he's he's been there for 12 months. Our, our attack coach is a defense coach. Our defense coach was the Wales under 20. We've got two defense coaches there. And we've got a fucking winger handing off a second row. Fuck off, boys. I mean, oh, and brief. So now we're going to move. It Are you was, okay? Uh, Are you was, okay? It was hard to watch, mate. It was hard to watch. Just the lack it of was. passion. The lack of passion. The lack of enthusiasm. The, I don't give a shit if you don't like going to South Africa for two weeks. Do you know what? If you don't want to go to South Africa for two weeks, don't get on the plane. I'll find somebody that does. Because I can tell you there's a thousand players that would give their right arm to be on that fucking plane being in that shit. And that lack, I think we've removed that lack of passion. We, we, we've done this whole thing where we're trying to be too English. We, we, we're still fixated on the late 90s, early 2000 English team that was like, oh yeah, we're, we're, we're going to play with a lack of passion and we're all cold and, we, and this is how we think. You can think about the game, you can process the game, and you can still show, show passion for the game. And there was none of that there. And that was this, the disappointing bit was a complete lack of passion, the lack of wanting to be in that shirt, the lack of wanting to be on that pitch. And like I said, nobody steps onto that pitch. Nobody stepped onto that plane going, I don't want to go, yeah? Because they could have quite easily not gone. Everybody wanted to be there on whatever it was, didn't turn up on Saturday. Um, and the annoying bit was, 
was that pitch was absolutely lovely. I could have just sat there and looked at the. the I'd have been. I would oh, have played for it. You'd have just sat there and gone, give me, give me an easel and some paint. In fact, if half the pack had just sat there and done, at least we'd have had something we could have sold down the market after, and we could have, we could have come on with something. Fuck me, it was it was a hard watch as a as a Scarlet supporter. It was a hard watch for the rest of us who aren't Scarlet uh, supporters. It was shocking me. It I was, didn't even enjoy is, it. I was just depressed watching it. Yeah, you didn't even enjoy it. I thought you were looked at being Osprey. No, and and we and we said no, and it it, it wasn't even enjoyable. He was, yeah, I, no, and no. Uh, we said this in our WhatsApp. The bit that saddens me most is the decline of Foxy. Oh yeah, he's it passed it. Just been, he's gone. It's just yeah. sad at this point. And and, and yeah. actually, I was reminded that um, Scarlets still have on their books Samson Lee, Foxy, Scott yeah. Williams, and, <laughs> and you probably can include Ken on that as well, only because he's injured. Yeah, because if Ken was fit, he'd be playing and doing his all in, and that's yeah. just I think that's despicable. But Ken, that on your books, yeah, Ken, Ken yes, is out, spend. Yeah, but Ken is out. Ken could probably still play. If Ken wasn't injured, he'd still be playing. Well, at, at the didn't rate. want to include Ken because yeah. do you think he puts in for the badge? He loves the yeah. club. Yeah, you know, he, he wears the blazer and, and all that shit. But don't get me wrong, Foxy does as well. Fox, Foxy, Foxy is yeah. a scarlet. You cut me in half, and he, and there's a nice little picture inside there. But we all need to know when that time comes, and we yeah. all need to know when we go. Do you know what? Um, and we said this last season. He, he started last season superb at inside centre. He really, really was. He was uh, top ten to uh, ten uh, ten turnovers in eight games. You know, he was at the top of the turnover table, mm. and. But there's other stuff that you need to do to be a centre. And Joe Roberts is absolutely showing that with Foxy next to him, that's where he needs to be. Um, but, yeah, it, there, there just hasn't been that that stuff coming through. And Scott Williams was on a one-year contract. We've heard nothing about him, but he's still there. And this is year two. Um, and he's still injured. There we go. Anyway, Jane, what, what were you going to say, mate? Yeah, just to say, I think this is a difficult one, isn't it? Because on the one hand, we always knew this was going to be a very difficult time for the Scarlets in South Africa. It's a very difficult place Mm. to go. We knew they were going to be under Kosh. Having said that, you look at the results and the stats. 63-21, that's a record defeat for the Scarlets. 52-7, a total of 115 points conceded and 18 tries in just two games. I mean, you've got to be hoping for better than that, surely. And you know, it's it's a difficult one, isn't it? Because like, if you come away with some... If you get battered, right, but you come away with a bonus point, that's yep. something, isn't it? And we talked about yep. it in the last part. If you came back from South Africa, you can go, well, you know, we got, okay, we got battered, yeah. but we got two losing bonus points. Yeah, At least that's something. But to come yeah. away from South Africa with nothing is really, really tough. And I want to get your thoughts on Yohan mm-hmm. Lloyd, because I watched him at 10. I actually thought he did all right, you know. I think he showed some really nice glimpses in difficult circumstances, you know. Mm. But um, well, what do you make of him at 10? Because I do think he, he he looked okay. I thought Tane Plumtree was good as well, mate. I think there was the only yeah. two scarless players that really stood out for me on the South African tour. I think, I think the interesting with Plumtree was when he scored his second try, is everyone was so shocked, they just stopped and went, fuck me, it's a scarlet heading for the line. Fucking hell. That's, that's, even the referee was like, I don't know what's happening. Look, he's he's died. He scored. There you go. Um, yeah, I think it's too early with Yo and Lloyd. I'll be honest. Um, I'm I'm not convinced. No, you're not. Yeah, you said no, for ages. You'd be yeah. Convinced. Um, but I don't think that's him. I, I think you know all the best players play with the best players around them, and um, you know he needs. Someone like Eddie James at inside centre that if he's in trouble he can just offload and leave a six foot four eighteen stone guy run at some small people. He he needs somebody inside him like Gareth Davis that can go right. You're having the ball. You're not having the ball. We're kicking the ball. You know that little bit of experience. So you know he's at a new club, new systems. It's going to take a while to bed in to settle in. Um, I think he's trying too hard. In all honesty, the yeah, management's not great. Yeah, well, you look at somebody like Dinky Jones, who just goes, yeah, nothing's on, fuck it, who fit down to the 22? Yeah, 
uh, there is a try on. I, I could send an overlap bucket down to the 22. There's a t the try line's in front of me. I've got 10 metres to go. I might just kick it into the corner and see where we can go from there. We'll build from there, you know. You, sometimes you need a game manager, and I just think it's going to take time for him to build. But this goes back to my point earlier. We've had 16 weeks in pre-season, boys. And half of that team didn't play against the Dragons and against Cardiff, you know. We were pulling in boys that are playing for fucking Van Dubby and Kamad and Quinns, you know. What, why why do we have a pre-season if it's not to get ready for the season? I don't I genuinely at the minute now don't care if those 18 and 19 year olds in academy who that we aren't going to see in senior team for two seasons, you know, give them the time, let them go and play for the junior clubs. That's what they're there for. They're there to learn their game. Sticking them in against Cardiff just means that. We're interrupting the flow. So when we get to play Cardiff again this week, it's it's almost like we're still in pre-season, only we've had a really tough pre-season down in South Africa, taking an absolute battering. And the only thing we're coming back with is a fucking suntan and a nasty rash. And that's the reality. You know, that's that's what we're coming back from South Africa with. So anyway, we're... we're, no we're green. Green shoots is there. No. There's no green shoots. No, not, not for me. Not yet. And and it's a real shame because last season we did show some. Last season we were starting and there was a lot of positivity around the club. And there still is, don't get me wrong. And, and I'll and I'll come to that bit in a minute. Yeah. Um but I can still be positive about the club and the way forward and be really frustrated with that performance from last Saturday. Right, let's, let's say uh, you can bring the kids back in now. <laughs> <laughs> I think. <laughs> so let's have a look at uh, this weekend. So um, Friday night game, game of controversy. Ospreys playing the Sharks, the Hollywood Sharks, up in the Stoop. Uh, or if... If you read some of the stuff, some of the press releases that have gone out now, the London Ospreys play in the Hollywood show. Yes. I'll I see mean, you. I'll see official. Yeah, this release, is a weird one. <laughs> like, that's like, where, where's I think my foot Vince, gone? Like, the child has written the press release. Yeah. <laughs> Steve what, Thomas what? written the press release, allegedly. Oh, right. He's what, a nice guy. He's a good guy. I like that. What, what, what is somebody in jest? What are you making of the game, mate? What are you hoping for? I'm happening? really looking forward to it. I am I, I am saying this as someone who's been in favour of the game from the start. I think it's a chance to do something um, different. And I'm hoping I'm hoping to go up to it myself. Um, there's only an hour on the train. Get up there. You know, it'll be something different. You know, I've never been up there before. And, and the stark reality is there will be more at the stoop next week than there was at the, uh, Swansea.com this weekend. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's that's just stark reality. Um, from the rugby point of view, I'm not looking forward to it at all. Fuck no. Um, why are we ca the sharks just had a bit of a lesson from the kids? Um. They did not play well at all, and you can only hope that they don't play well um, next time. Uh, but Sharks seem to be a team we never really turn up against. Um, like I said earlier, the injury woes going into um, into Friday. You know, we've not got Nicky Smith, who was a bit of a, a safety blankie on the weekend in terms of set piece. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's for a rugby point of view, it's going to be a bit grim. I think. I think we're going to get a lesson learned. But it will um, be an event. It, as as an event, it'll be an event, and and yeah. people are going to talk about it, and and yeah. that's the, the the main thing. And mm. I think I'll talk more about it on the Ospreys mm. on Wednesday, and after I, you know, hopefully get an invite to um uh, something tomorrow. But it'll be an event that people talk about. And we can turn around at the end of the season and people on Twitter or, X or, uh, or on Facebook will say, you did that. I said, yeah, but at least we tried something. Yeah. You know, That's at least point. we went out and did it. We, yeah. What have you done? Hmm. 
you know That's but for years now we, we yeah. get you know we played games in bridge end we played games in st helens we played games in Neath, nice, right i can't think of a time where you know and th- this would upset people that if going to play in ponty mm-hmm. dragons going to play i can't think where dragons would go play we played keys. Caffilly. no well can't yeah, play we played... keys. you can't play there but, they have played in but, Caffilly, right? right they played in Caffilly and, and scarlet's yeah, no. Yeah, Wrexham once wouldn't they? Wasn't it? You played the Wrexham. Yeah, once, yeah, they did. They did play when there wasn't a, a an RGC region, and officially the RGC was, was part of Scarlet. Yeah, I get your point. James, so yeah. the team has done it. Yeah, you know we, we are awesome guys that for doing it, but no other team does it. And I, okay. it's going to be a spectacle. It's going to be something. We're going to get taunts. The boys are going to have a good night out in Richmond afterwards. All right, so um, Jamie, give us a, a a quick overview of Munster and Dragons. Yeah, so um, <laughs> Munster away. When do you guys think the last time the Dragons won out in Munster? So they've oh, only beaten Munster <laughs> once in Munster. When do you think that was? Uh, Two thousand. TV invented. <laughs> So it was the first, the very first season of regional rugby. That was the last time the Dragons won out oh, in Munster. Um, yeah, and I'm concerned that we're going to get absolutely battered because we are missing seven of our Welsh internationals. But there is some good news. So Ting Basham, reading the Argus today, so he could be returning for us, which would be a bit of a boost given our injuries in the back row. Um, Ollie Griffiths should be okay for this game after his shoulder injury. Um, we might be getting George Young we'll back as well. He's a really good young flanker. Yeah, so we'll see how that goes. Um, I mean, it's hard to know what our team is going to look like because I don't know what's happening with Rodrigo Martinez because he went off after 10 minutes. We know that Lonsdale and Harrison Keddy went off with concussion. And we know how uh, really strict Di Flanagan is with players who have concussion because Kai Evans could have actually played against Cardiff on sun, on Sunday. Regulation mm-hmm. said he could have played, but Dave Flam was like, no, that's you're not playing. Nice. So, um, and that's to be admired, in fairness. But uh, yeah, I'm worried about this game. I, I'm really worried about it. Um, and I'm worried about the Dragon season as a whole. So, yeah, I'll just give you a quick rundown of fixtures. So we got Munster next. After that, we got Leinster at home. We got the Ospreys at home. Then we got the South African tour. We got to go to the Sharks. We got to go to the Lions. Um, I'm really worried that we could be going on one of those long losing streaks that we've seen from the Dragons. Um, I, I'm, I'm concerned. I, I'm really, really concerned. Now, some people might say, well, come on, Jamie, it's only two games into the season. But um, I, I'm generally worried. I am generally worried because we spunked two games that we should have won. We should have beaten Edinburgh. We should have beaten Cardiff. Those were two winnable games. And I just think, well, if you can't win those games, when are you going to win? You know, you've got to win those games. And, we talked about, you know, Dragons having four of the first five games at home. They don't win those. I don't know where the Dragons are going. And I'm finding it very difficult right now. Even just after two games, I've already reached that point where I don't know where the next win is coming from. And this weekend, I'm afraid it's going to be an absolute smoke and I'm, I'm quite concerned about it. See, Scarlet's did that last year. Scarlet's had like five of the first seven games at home or something stupid like that. Lost every yeah. single... Well, we drew one and then lost the rest and we were close in a couple we should have won a couple of those games and then it went just shit for a while and then it came back at the end of the season so yeah I feel your pain Jane I feel your pain um so <laughs> you'll be my... you'll turn up for that game well yeah that's the that's most the... winnable game I would say after that run I just mentioned but mm. that's no guarantees I am quite concerned I am about this season <laughs> I really really am no I am I... Everyone enjoys beating the Ospreys, mate. You'll, you'll enjoy that. <laughs> James I'm is going again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, I can't really, can't really argue with it, to be honest. We are a really dislikable team at times. Yeah. Well, let me tell you about dislikable. So, Scarlet's Cardiff on, on Saturday. So, there's all these issues about um like the Wales game and all of this. So we we set out as a Scarlet's pod a couple of weeks ago. We we spoke to Ed Jenks and all that kind of stuff. And he was telling us about the atmosphere inside um Nice is is where he coaches now. So like 
you know, it, 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 there's an effort to make an atmosphere. There's, you know, there's music, there's drums, there's people singing inside the stage. So we, all right, do you know what? Let's try and bring a little bit of that back to the park. Let's let's get some guys with the drums and the trumpets, and you know, let's let's build an atmosphere inside there. Let's let's get people singing. We said that we were going to use our our podcast as choir practice, you know, so somebody could come on and scar. <laughs> let's yeah yeah let's let's fucking do some of that yeah. And I and I put this out on Twitter and on Facebook and all of that kind of stuff. And I've said, right, okay, you know, I want somebody with a drum, I want somebody with a trumpet. Let's get some music in there for Saturday. Let's really make this an event. I, say, I don't give a shit if the Scarlet say yes or no. We're going to try and get people in there. We're going to try and have a bit of fun, and we're going to try and do something. Yeah. So the messages I've I, I've had back is, we we make enough noise in the stadium, and it is bollocks. We do. I've, I've fucking been in there where there's a fucking packet of fags dropped on the north stands and I could fucking hear it on the south. There's enough noise in there, my say, bollocks there is. And, you know, you could have a crowd singing for 80 minutes and then stick a drum on them as well and it would just go absolutely mental. So that, that was one of them. We make enough noise as it is. And please don't. And then no explanation. Just... <laughs> Please don't fuck off. I I've had a tits full of the lot of them going. You know, oh, we, we, why would we need that? Why would we do that? Do you know what? There's we we had criticism, and I can't say where it's come from, but we got criticised this week as a pod for saying stuff about the Scarlets. Yeah, you want us to be positive about the Scarlets, and and we are. We're positive about the Scarlets. Yeah. We take one-eyed scarlets to the max, yeah. But you at do, the same, certainly. Yeah, <laughs> but at the same time, you can sit there and criticize them and say, and say, you know what? I expected more passion. Of course, I, yeah. I expect, uh, yeah, and and like I just did, yeah. And then you're getting criticized for being too negative. Why would anyone oh. want to listen to you because you're being too negative? Fuck off, and then fuck off some more. We, I have had an absolute tits full of it. If we sit here. Yeah, and this is particularly in the Scarlets, and particularly for this game on Saturday. If we sit there and do nothing, buckle's going to happen. It's going to be a hard enough game as it is. It's going to be a fucking uh, like eighty mile an hour winds, the the rain coming in from the fucking horizontal and all of this kind of stuff. Do you know what? I mean, some guy standing in the corner going. <laughs> might actually just get a few of you up on your feet and singing. It might just actually make a little bit of it, you know, an atmosphere in there. It might just get some of those players on the pitch going, wow, we, you know, we we owe something to the crowd here. It might just be enough for people to go, actually, yeah, I enjoyed some of that. Now I'm coming back again. Are you um are you going to the game, me, out of curiosity? And this is the other bit. I can't make this game on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> You're picking it up. Uh, yeah, I know. I, I'm not <laughs> a Stalin Partridge moment, that is. <laughs> Just because I can't go is not going to stop me from encouraging other people to go. Oh, fair That's fair, what I fair, fair. I'm, I'm, I'm quite limited on what I can and can't do. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll put it absolutely on the line for everyone, right? So my operation in the summer, yeah, where I've now got a colostomy bag fitted to the side of my stomach, I don't know when that's going to fill. I don't know when it's going to when it's not. I'm still getting used to it, and every now and again, it leaks shit. Okay, thanks for that, Lee. Yeah, I don't want to. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to be doing that. I don't have to be clearing that up in the Scarlet's bloody toilets, you know. And do, do you know what I mean? I, I'm I'm not confident about it. Many words in the shit on the pitch. Surely. <laughs> 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 I can't have some of that. No, do you know what I mean? I it's, it. It's, it's a personal thing that I can't go, yeah. but it's not going to stop me from encouraging everybody else to go. And I just I, hope, I hope that the listeners are not eating <laughs> when you talk about that. <laughs> I do apologise if you're eating your lunch or yeah. breakfast or, you know, whatever. You'd be there, but, you, you know, no, no. Somebody asked me about it the other day. They said, well, put your money where your mouth is. Why aren't you going? I said, that's why I can't go. 
Okay, yeah. fair enough. Yeah, so, I'm just but, joking. You know that anyway. Oh yeah, no, just I know that. But uh, you know, it's it's worth saying that out there. That I I went to eight nine games. Like I wasn't a season ticket holder, but I went to eight or nine games that season. You know, yeah. most most of that first run, and not only did I go to those games, I took friends with me who'd never been to see a rugby game before. You know, mm. and some of those some of my friends that I took then are, are still going. So you know. We that have my next to... question. Are they still friends now? Or... <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a deal breaker. Right? Yeah, you, you bastard. You made, you have now got a pop <laughs> fucking depression post. No, it, do you know what I mean? This, this should be an awesome game on Saturday. The weather is going to work against us. But we, we, I'm hoping that there's a reaction from the boys. But more than yeah. that, I'm hoping there's a reaction from supporters. This is our first home game. And yeah, it hasn't gone great. It has, it's not been the best build up to your first home game. But you know, as a supporter, we're part of of that team. We we, we are part of that team because yeah. when you run on a pitch, and and this is from somebody that has done this, yeah. When you run on a pitch and you've got, I think my biggest crowd was about four and a half thousand people. Four and a half thousand people sounds massive when you're running on the pitch. It's there's a crackle. You can feel any electricity, yeah, and you could. You, if you're running out and it's quiet and you're like, fucking hell, these boys are going for me. And then you hear this and 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 it gets you and it hits you right in the in the stomach and you go, right, this is it. We're in now. And every single person that sits there and goes, oh, don't make a noise. No, no, put the drum away. Don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're helping the opposition. We got to get there. We got to scream. We got to shout. We got to make that noise. We got to make that such an intimidating place to come. Yeah. But actually, people don't want to come. You know, this is our ground. This is where we live. This is where we play. And if you don't want to come, that's fine because I've got another five hundred mates that'll come and take that seat, and we're going to scream for the scarlet. And that's what should have happened at Ronnie Parade. Yeah, but that absolutely. did not happen whatsoever. And it fed into Cardiff. I think I think I played into that because yeah. there was a lack of intimidation. Yeah. whatsoever it was like a library and and yeah, that's right. that's where we need to improve what we do as a that's why i'm mellowing towards the ospreys you know we, we we spoke to the commercial director i actually i think what the ospreys are doing is quite good but what they aren't what the ospreys are not doing is they're not telling the people that want to help them to shut up they're saying you want to help us great come on let's work together yeah and and that's what we're not getting through the west Anyway, right, let's do some predictions before time yes. runs out. So um, Harley has very kindly put his predictions in already because he's a good boy like that and he didn't want us making them up for him. So um, let's do Osprey's Sharks first. So Harley has got Osprey's by one on that. Mm. James, James Spice. yeah, he's got Osprey's by one. <laughs> What are, what are you making um, of that one? Shark, sharks by 13. Sharks by 13. Okay. I, I just, I can't see. Maybe I'll mellow by Wednesday when I know <laughs> potentially about the injury. Uh, mm. um, I think if we got, if, if Garen Phillips is definitely it, so we have Garen, Reese Henry, so Reese Henry's not basically having to flip flop between tight and loose head again if he's you know if we have Tom Bota and Ben Warren and then Gary Phillips Reese Henry, um, you're still going to get shafted more, by thirteen. More sympathetic, <laughs> but you're still, still going to get shafted by thirteen. <laughs> All right, Jamie, what, what what do you reckon, mate? I'm going to go Sharks by eight, um, purely because Osprey's lacking those Welsh internationals because that's a silly game. And I think the Sharks would be too powerful for him, especially up front. So I'll go Sharks by eight. Okay, fair enough. Uh, me, I'm going to go... See, I think it'll be uh, uh, a lot closer than we think. When I spoke to, to Rito from the Stormers, the defensive coach of the Stormers, he said, if you're going to play a South African side, play them in their first week of their tour. Because their first week of their tour, they, they they don't travel early. They're all a little bit kind of dazed and all that kind of stuff. And they never really hit the straps until the second and third week. And by the fourth week, they all want to go home. So if you're going to play them, play them in the first week or the fourth week. So I'm, I'm actually going to go Sharks by five. I think 
it'll actually be quite quick, uh, quite close. And I would not be at all surprised to see um, Ospreys actually nick that one on there. So, um, Munster against Dragons. <laughs> Fuck. Harley yeah. has gone Munster by 28. I can't argue <laughs> with that, in fairness. <laughs> Yeah, I, I won't argue with that. So, uh, James, what are the what's, what's your prediction for Munster and Dragons, mate? Um, nineteen. It Munster. is just I. I think. Oh, look, I feel your pain, James. We went out there last year. We lost fifty-eight-three. Um, yeah. It's a fucking horrible place, but it's not in. You're right to say it's not in the main stadium. No, no, it's just being or played it... in Cork. Must Great Park in Cork. Mm. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. So you know, may, may, maybe that'll give you a chance. I don't know. You, I doubt you, it, you but... have no chance. You that, have no chance. It's going to be. That's where they played the Springboks, and that's where they beat the Springboks. So yeah, <laughs> I don't get any difference whatsoever. Whether it's played in Cork or Limerick. <laughs> but then what are you saying? No, Munster by. Uh... Munster by however, 19, I said. 19, yeah. Jamie, what about you, mate? Well, look, as I said, I think this has the potential to be very ugly and they desperately need the legs of Bash and Ollie Griffiths back. Um, look, if we get battered, but we take a losing bonus point or try bonus point, I'll be happy with that. Um, I'm going to go for Munster by 22, but it could be more than that. I'm generally worried about it because they drew with Benetton and they're going to be one of the best. Yeah, I, I think we're um you're in for a rough day. Genuinely yeah. do. And uh, so I've gone Munster by thirty five. Just cause yeah. It could be that, yeah, it could be. We're we're getting fucked over, so I need to share some of that around, that's why. Okay. Cardiff and Scarlet's to finish off then. So Harley has gone Cardiff by eight. James, <laughs> your 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 call on this one. Yeah, hell, this is depressing, isn't it? Um, <laughs> as I said earlier, the the one matchup I'm looking forward to is you know, this is the main right. Mm. That, that's a battle for the ages. Um, no, I I'm Ains. I'm going to go Scarlets by three. I just right. I think that they're hurt and they're a wounded animal. They're going to come back. You're at home. I'm being optim, optim, I'm being an optimist and saying that you're going to have some fans come out and heck the park or whatever you're calling it, the Depression Dome, um, and you are going to get that support. And I think it's just going to nudge you over um, because I think you'll have that. I think I, even though Scarlet's been great, I think you'll have that edge over Cardiff in mm. the set piece. Okay, Jamie. Yeah, I think it's a really good opportunity for the Scars to get back on track, actually. Um, you know, they're going to want to put that disappointment out of Africa behind them. You are at home. This is not a good Cardiff team. I know Cardiff fans are cock and on top of the world because they beat Dragons yet again. So mm, what? No one it. gives a fuck. You're still average, <laughs> Cardiff fans. You are. They, they've got it all to come, Cardiff, mind. You know, mm. they, they've got a lot of pain to come. And I'm telling you now, they're getting their asses handed to them the plate in the Champions Cup. Because bigger and better teams will find them out quite quickly. Mm. And I think this is a good opportunity now for Scarlets to get back on track against this Cardiff team. So I am going to go for Scarlets by five. Oh, that's my five. Okay. So, yeah, I, I'm agreeing with a pair of you. Um, I think there's been a lot of soul searching, a lot of very strong conversations, a lot of tackle bags being hit quite intensely through this week. Um Anyone that's been on the wrong end of a uh, a couple of weeks like that, you either shrink and you disappear or you stand up and you be counted. And this weekend we find out if we're going to stand up and count, be counted. So I think it'll be a low scoring game. I, I think it'll be, you know, there's only going to be one score in it for like the whole game. But I'm going to go Scarlet's by three and it'll probably be 12-9 with kicks and that'll be it. But it could be 3 0 with a dodgy penalty on 80 minutes. I'd still want the drum going. As long as I get a drum in a stadium at some point this year, just to piss off the miserable bastards. I'm there. I'm right there. 
That's your, that's your news desk for next week sorted, Jay. <laughs> Lovely stuff. <laughs> <laughs> right. I think that's it, gents. I think we are done for the night. Uh, only a little bit shorter than last week. <laughs> I know. We said we have a long one. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Okay. So we are going to call it a day there and we shall come back to it all again next week. Uh, yeah. Hopefully Harley will be there and I can rip the piss out of him for a decent Scarlet's win. I'm looking forward to that already. <laughs> right. You hope. <laughs> in, in hope. In hope. Right. Thank you very much for tonight, gents. It's been a pleasure. Um, I wish you well for the week. Enjoy your rugby. I'll see you next weekend. All the best. Take care. Bye now. Thank you.